say my name until the city burns and the stars fade away and your scars don't hurt stay with me until the last man falls i don't need them anyway when i'm with you i have it all oh, oh i'll never let you slip away oh, oh and you don't have to be afraid i will hold you till the sun comes crashing down I'm yours until the end of time Hello Well Ed, how's it going? Not too bad at all, how's things? Not too bad um, So we're up here with you today We're on the Scottish borders, am I right? Yes, we're, um, we're just just outside Kelso Kind of in between Kelso and Coldstream A place called Hume is where we are today because you're, you're actually based in Northumberland. Yes, we are. We're, um, we're actually not that far from the border at all. Um, about five mile. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of, it's pretty normal for us to be both sides of the border each day, really. Um, some farms we spray even have land on either end of the border. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, what is it you're actually doing today? Um, we're, we've got um, we've got 136 hectares of T0 to start here today on winter wheat. Um, Usually, we would have had this well out of the way sort of two weeks ago, um, but unfortunately we've been kind of blessed with a lot of wind and then we've had a real cold snap. Uh, it's kind of been down to like minus three most nights and it really stresses the crop. It's, it's just not worth spraying. It's better to hold off. So this week it's warmed back up and um, we are we're back out playing catch up. So it's quite nice to be back out the yard and uh, off liquid fertilizer. That's all we've kind of been doing the last couple of weeks. So it's uh, nice to have a change. So you've a couple of beetlings out today. You've got the one that you're in at the moment and your dad is currently out in another one of your beetlings. Yep, uh, he's out. We've got another RB35, the same as this one, and he's out today putting liquid fertilizer on. Um, not actually far from where we are, about five or six miles. Um, he's getting um, final applications on oilseed rape and wind barley, and then he's also getting first applications on wind roads as well. So that's keeping him up in the today. What made you go with bait and prayers? Um, I suppose, you know, it's not like we're stuck in our ways, but we've always had Batemans uh, for a long time now. And I think there's quite a few people that will tell you this, that runs the machines. They're nice and straightforward. Um, they're, they're easy to run, they're easy to fix yourself, as we found out last night, unfortunately, when filming. Um, <laughs> and the backup is phenomenal. I know, you know, where, as you'll know yourself, coming up from Devon yesterday, we're right at the other end of the country. And then, um, you know, we can have party at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, we had a we had a wheel motor blow on one um, on a Sunday once, and we were they actually sent the wheel motor up on a train. Uh, we were back up and running again mid morning on Monday. Um, you just can't beat it, really. I know there is there's bigger brands out there, there's comfier brands, um, but for what we do as contractors, we know where we are with Bateman. Um, we get good resale and, like I said, brilliant backup. We can't really look away from them. Uh, we've, you know, we've built up a good relationship with them. Really. That's absolutely brilliant. Because obviously you expanded to the second machine with the last year. Uh, yeah, that's that's a new addition uh, this January. Uh, we, we picked oh, okay. up we picked up quite a bit more work. Uh, we had a fast track demount which we've kept. Um, it just got to the stage where you're actually quite limited in what you can do with the with the fast track. Although um, you know we're only spraying at 24 meters today. Um, fast track there's no variable track width um, some people are on 72 inch centers some are on 80 and also there's no clearance so you can't send it into oilseed rape uh, you can't send it in for spraying crops off um, at harvest time um, 24 meter boom small tank uh, so yeah we decided to take a plunge and go for another bateman and so far so good really tell, tell me a little bit about the sprayer actually because one like it's, it's something that i've not necessarily done a lot with in the past myself and I I find quite a few of the features quite interesting because you've obviously that sprayer has like ultrasound, she's got the RTK. So just maybe run me through a few of the features that she's running. Yeah, so the, the ultrasound is known as NORAC and it's it's basically uh, this machine has five sensors along the boom that um, a bit like a bat, uh, they click away and it basically tells the sprayer how high the boom is. So 
I can set a, um, a figure in the screen here of how high I need my boom to be and it will basically look after itself and the sensors will talk to the box in the cab and move oil into rams uh, for moving the boom up or down. It's, it's so handy, it's, it's brilliant. We've got it on both machines. Um, this one's actually um, a little bit more advanced than the other one. Uh, Bateman brought out a system last year called BBL, which stands for Bateman Boom Leveling. They basically changed a little bit of the hardware and the software uh, to do with the NORAC. And the, the boom, you know, what a difference. It rides so much better. Um, we don't get as much bounce in. It's not as clumsy. It definitely kind of um, is a lot more responsive. That much so we had to actually turn the responsiveness down on this one, so I thought it was going to shake itself a bit. Um, whereas Dad's one is just standard NORAC. Um, both machines are also, they're both on RTK, uh, which we feel is something that's, it's, I think it's a must now really on sprayers. For example, this farm here, uh, we put the tram lines in with the sprayer, um, which is, it's handy. You know, it means we can have them where we want them. Uh, it's one less thing for the drill man to think about as well. And um, we know with the RTK that if we go into a field, put wheelings in, and they disappear over the winter or the crop comes away and we can't see where we've been and um, we can go straight back in um, a year after or a few months down the line and hit that magic button and be in the exact same place again so yeah, yeah. Um, and like how did you actually get into the brain contractor um dad started it uh, about 15 years ago um, we had basically uh, one big customer and <laughs> it, it was great um, we, he'd work away quite happily there. Um, obviously, times change. Uh, they have their own machine now, um, but we, we still actually do quite a bit of work with them. Uh, they're virtually our neighbours. And um, so we work away with them still. Um, but it kind of helped us get onto a bit more work. Uh, we picked up a few more customers. Um, so when we lost theirs, it wasn't as much of a blow. Um, we were pretty quiet for a couple of years. Um, very quiet in fact, but sort of the last three to four years, it's really started picking up again, um, you know, to the stage where we're two self-propelled now, which I never thought we would. Um, and it's it's kind of just snowballed from there. We've, we've never been tempted to uh, venture into any other form of contracting. Um, we dabbled a bit with drilling and stuff, but we're really just spraying Abinex and slug pellets and liquid fertilizer. So a very niche, uh, very specialist, but it, it seems to have worked in our favour really. Um, it, it was perfect timing with coming home from college. You know, I always, I always had visions of being an agronomist or something along them lines. But uh, unfortunately, if you lot with your Luke first DVDs and everything like that, soon, uh, <laughs> soon changed my mind. <laughs> and I thought, no, we could, um, we could have a pop at this. Um, so I kind of came home from college. Did the majority really had one sprayer then did the majority of the sprayer driving myself and it's just picked back up from there and i, I wouldn't change it for the world and yeah because yeah, obviously it is it is enough for, for the two of you too because it is just it's just your father and yourself working and you also have the machinery dealer business as well yep yeah so it's um it's just me and dad um full time uh, i don't know how much longer that will go on for we're kind of getting to the stage now where we could really do with an extra pair of hands but yeah we um the machinery dealing um you know obviously we're not in a big way we don't um we don't sell as much as a lot of the big guys but it works really really well in the winter um when we're not spraying we'll kind of wrap up officially by the end of november but really it'll start fizzling off end of september there'll just be enough work for one sprayer and then that'll be us until the end of march um, so we can kind of, we can take on a few projects in the workshop, we can uh, go through trading machines that we've had for the year and um, servicing the customer's, customer's machines and it, it really does work well and it's, it's a nice change as well. I don't think I could do this job for 12 months of the year. It would get quite, uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite repetitive to say the least. Is there still quite a stigma around spraying then? There is. Um, I think more and more so. Um, we've had I don't know whether you've seen in a lot of the farming press over the last couple of years, you know, there's a massive question mark over glyphosate, um, how it's used and where it's used, and a lot of people are wanting to see it banned. Um, it's, it's not actually harmful. Um, it's used under a controlled 
manner, uh, you know, all the time. You know, these machines have to have an MOT um, every year to prove that they're safe. Um, there's no leaks and they're efficient and they're, they're the right amount on. And then as an operator, we have to have uh, PA1, 2, 4, everything like this. And we also have to basically take a course um, every winter and to basically learn about safe handling of pesticides and safe application. Um, when you take the course, you, you gain points and you've got to keep a certain amount of points. I believe it's 30 points. You've got to maintain that 30 points um, to be able to continue applying pesticides. So it's it's all in a very controlled manner, everything that's done. You know, the agronomists walk the field, they recommend what, chemi what chemicals needed, um, when it goes on, how it goes on, you know, even down to water rates, nozzle choice. And then, um, you know, us guys actually, you know, tip it in the sprayers and put it on. We have to be, we have to be just on the ball as well. You know, we have to careful what we do, be very conscientious. And hopefully if everyone can keep doing that, um, might just erase this stigma of you know thinking of a, a poison in everyone they're, they're constantly being tested and developed and if they can't be tested or developed and brought forward for modern use and um, they just get discontinued um, but I think seeing glyphosate go would be a big shock especially this far north um, we don't get the heat um, so we, we do sometimes need um, glyphosate or Roundup as, a, as like a pre-harvest desiccant, you know, to get the crop dried off so they can actually get it off the field. Yeah, and uh, like it, it's a clear example of how far spraying from the actually tucked away there in one of your workshops is a forge with, with a little sprayer on it and you compare that then to what you're running today, it's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, no, things have come on that. Um, that little sprayer of dads, it's a, well, it's a, it's a Pulse and Dexter. Um, I can't actually remember the make of the sprayer on the back, but it's um, brass nozzles and um, it's actually got a, like, a brass plate with it that goes on the back with, with all the chemicals that you could use back then and how you, you rate and how you mix them and things. We know this sprayer here yeah, going up and down the field. Um, you know, it's, it's controlling the boom, it's doing the steering for me, it's, um, it's doing everything for me, it's turning it on and off at the end. Um, and really that's how it should be, you know, with these products. It, it, it keeps the bar high, it keeps, you know, it shows that we are, you know, we do care what we put on and how we put it on. You know, if it's windy, we stop, if it's wet, we stop. Um, I think a lot of farmers and spray operators are very conscientious anyway. Well, that's absolutely brilliant, Ed. Um, thanks a million for having us up here this weekend and we'll definitely get a good bit more of yourselves working between the two bits. No problem at all. Uh, thanks for coming up. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Bye. bye. Cheers. Bye. Fade away and your scars don't Your scars don't hurt